Okay, yes, the title of this video is a little bit dramatic, but it's true. I'm in the middle of a sort of life detox where I just want to like clear all the rubble from last year and remember that one, what's important to me and you know, my happiness, and two, what's bad for me or my health and my kind of sanity. So I started thinking this way already beginning of January and I'm still very much feeling, you know, the fresh start new year kind of feeling. So without further ado, these are the five things that must go. Five things that I'm just like scrapping this whole year. Well, I hope. First of all, last year was so much fun and so magical, but also dramatically hectic. And the biggest reason for this was me being so much in touch with other people, like all of the time. My inbox was frantic, just like never ending emails to reply to. And I filled my calendar with so many meetings and events and going for drinks with just lovely people, which was brilliant. I enjoyed myself tremendously, but it also made me realize just how much time by myself I really need to, you know, stay grounded. So I'm neither an introvert nor an outrovert, or like I'm rather a little bit of both. So I switched between the two. So if I overdo either one, it kind of destabilizes me. So I need to see people like actually every week to not go a little bit like too intense in my own bubble. But I also need a lot of time to just sit by myself and do my own thing. Lockdown was too much of the introverted stuff. And last year it was too much outro. Anyone else feel like they're like switching between being introverted and outroverted? It's a bit of a confusing personality to have, isn't it? Anyway, I need to put a stop to being this available all the time. I went to this book industry event last year and I was chatting to an author that I know and to her editor. And this author is such a lovely, kind and just like super sweet person. I like her a lot. And I was saying to her like, oh, by the way, did you get my email about this thing? And she said like, oh, I don't know. And her editor turns to me and says like, oh, Jenny, don't you know that she doesn't reply to emails? And you know, both of them sort of chuckle a little bit. And I went like, hey, wait, is that an option to simply like not reply? And she seemed to have like zero guilt about this. And I think it's because she's made it into kind of a personality quirk, simply not being available. So no one can get like personally offended. Is this a possibility to have like an inbox free life? I'm definitely flirting with the idea. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm forwarding more and more emails to David, who is saying that like, he should be replying to more or less all of my emails as a kind of like chilled to the world. That boy, I mean, I'm not worthy, etc. Okay, let's look at diet, shall we? Which is of course the standard way of detoxing. And I've been like steadily getting out of the holiday type of diet with all the like bread and vegan meatballs and vegan cheeses and all of those like saffron buns, not to mention non-stop drinking at way too many social holiday parties and dinners and pub visits. So I haven't done like a dry January completely without any alcohol and neither will I do a dry February, but I have only really had like a glass of wine now and then when like out with friends. David and I haven't been like having wine with dinner or like done any of our charming little champagne at home date nights. Neither have we like eaten anything over the top unhealthy. This is not because we have made like a decision to cut back. It's more that we haven't felt like it, feeling like we're We've overindulged both with wine, but also with like a type of food that we're not used to eating. And really it gets a bit old eating a way that makes you like sluggish and hormonal and kind of tired and bloated after a while. So now we're practically like smoothie vegans. Like we have ginger shots and goji berries and kombucha in the fridge right now as we speak. How LA of us, don't you think? I feel like we're like cosplaying health freak Hollywood vegans right now and it's it's great, I kind of love it. So like 12K walks with a beetroot smoothie, salads and noodle soup and congee and porridge, buckets of green tea. All the good stuff that we're used to eating and drinking. And after just like three or four days into this routine, we already started feeling like so light and like clear headed. So instead of just like detoxing, you know, cutting at the crap, we actually seem to care much more about like replenishing, like filling up on the good stuff rather than just like cutting out the bad stuff. And like mentally, 
it's a much more exciting and attractive way of looking at it like adding goodness instead of staying away from badness i feel very fresh and luxurious indeed thank you so much to my lovely sponsor songmont for sponsoring the video this week songmont is a gorgeous bag brand celebrating timeless beauty and i mean you already know how i feel about investing in fewer but better timeless pieces for our wardrobe they have kindly sent me two of their beautiful luna bags from their eco vegan collection and listen to this these bags are made out of ocean plastic and waste materials which you could never guess holding these stunning little fellas they're so soft and the quality is just mwah. so turning waste into luxury that's certainly my kind of thing and i always love to shout about you know new innovative ways of creating high fashion items in sustainable ways but you know i'm a sucker for clever tricks and my favorite thing about these bags is that they can shape shift they can be worn in a variety of ways taking it from like a larger daytime bag to an evening wear little number because the bag comes with two different straps a long one for like a shoulder bag or a crossbody and a short strap for a shoulder or handheld larger bag but you can also remove both straps and click it together for a smaller handbag either as it is or with a short strap i got them in the caramel and the cloud color with gold plated details and hello obviously i just love them both the caramel is my favorite especially for like everyday repeat wear but i so so look forward to styling the cloud color with like my all white or all beige monochrome outfits i mean this is the type of fashion we need you buy one bag it's vegan sustainable great quality of timeless classic design and you get four bags in one simply because of its clever design these are the types of investment pieces that are like worth our hard-earned cash don't you think so go take a look at the luna bag and songmon's other eco vegan bags for yourself just click the link below and use my promo code jenny 12 and again thank you so much to songmon and let's get back to the video i'm not sure if we've talked about this before but i'm a massive worrier i overthink and worry about things a lot i get so tired of myself and like this hectic little brain of mine so one thing that i've noticed is that i live very much in the future spending my time like picturing scenarios that haven't happened yet it's a great source of joy for me when like the scenes that i'm picturing are you know a lovely holiday to look forward to or like a beautiful outfit that i will wear next week but that of course means that it's also a great source of stress and anxiety for me because sometimes i picture scenes that comes with like a lot of pressure like tricky work situations or like important career meetings and all of that so i don't know why i am like this i just like care so much about well everything everything feels just so important to me even having like friends over for dinner it's important to me so i like make an effort a lot i don't know if anyone else can relate to this but i feel like it sure is an interesting way of life. So what I've learned the hard way is that very logically, the further ahead in the future that I plan a thing, the more time I will have to worry about it. I remember one big job that we planned like six months in advance, a one week trip where we had to like shoot a bunch of videos and like it was an extremely high paid job with so many variables and like really high stakes. And seriously, walking around worrying and planning for this job for six months it almost broke me so david is in charge of clients and like our work calendar anyway so now we have decided that like he will tell me about the specifics about any job just a few days in advance simply so i don't have to like think about it for too long and plan about it for too long and myself too i try not to put anything in the calendar more than like two weeks in advance if i can help it maybe this is my most important detox of the year and really maybe my most important decision overall. Listen, I'm cutting screen time and I'm cutting it brutally. So this all started when I noticed how happy my writing routine makes me. I mentioned this briefly in a recent video, if you remember, that I'm just like my happiest whenever I'm working on a novel. And at first I just thought it was because of, you know, creative expression and artistic endeavors and you know cathartic outpour of words in beautiful poetic sentences you know all of that like fancy stuff but after a while i started wondering like how much of my writing happiness actually comes from me like 
muting my phone and closing the email tab on my computer. Like spending these mornings every week from like seven to noon without looking at my phone or inbox once. So naturally, this realization made me want to experiment. Also, David and I heard that France had started like a beef with Apple because one of the iPhone models gave like four times as much radiation as the legal limit. Did you hear about this? I don't remember the particulars, so excuse me if I got that new story wrong. But anyway, it made us go a bit like, oh, radiation is not great, is it? So sporadically, we've started like airplaning our phones, both to like cut radiation, but also to experiment with screen time and how it affects our mood and sleep and just like, sorry, but happiness. And sure, it should come as no surprise to anyone, but yes, we are dealing with a life changer here. We're airplaning so much now and just like my brain feels unscattered, like clear. I read better, I work better, I feel less like I'm being pulled in a thousand different directions at once. And Jesus, just how much time we're freeing up. It feels kind of like when you turn off the kitchen fan, do you know what I mean? It's like there's been this noise in my head constantly that you don't hear or notice until you turn it off. And like the silence is like startling and such a relief. And this is exactly how I've been feeling when writing with my phone on mute, focused, clear, and just silent. One warning sign that I've heard multiple times last year is that different people have been telling me that I'm working like a machine. I mean, this could of course be meant as a compliment, like, you know, working hard, meeting deadlines, you know, being reliable and like unbothered by, you know, human nature and like, the need to rest, but I can't help like seeing it more as being someone to pity. I picture like Wally, you know, left on an earth filled with like to the brim with like rubbish to endlessly clean up, never being told to take a day off or go get some spare parts for his squeaking, slowly breaking down hardware. I don't want to be Wally. Like, I mean, he's very pretty and all, but what a bleak way of life. So working as a machine, it has to go. This year I'm cutting down, not like speeding up. So someone else can like clean the rubbish for a while, you know? This is easy to say, but very hard to do. For me it is anyway. And I don't know, I'm sure a lot of you don't find it easy to say no to work and like set boundaries for work and off time. Please, if you do find it easy, teach me your ways, how to stop working like a machine and be like more intuitive and listen to your own, you know, health because Honestly, my intuition seems to be faulty when it comes to work because it just keeps telling me to, you know, ooh, this sounds fun, let's do this one. We can manage, I'm sure. That's not really clever. Because listen, what I want my faulty intuition to remember is that like happiness isn't really about exciting experiences and feeling proud of your own hard work and creative projects. That's one thing and it's a wonderful thing, but it's like, how much are the experiences and the work worth if you're too exhausted to feel like you're at all present? You know what I mean, like being too frazzled to feel like you can appreciate what's going on around you. Because if I truly think about it, like when I'm at my happiest, it's usually in those like small, tiny moments, like the slow moments of just like everydayness, like an early morning writing session with like hot sencha tea or reading a Chekhov story with David sitting next to me on the sofa watching a film, that kind of thing. So just like, you know, how our kitchen looks when the sun comes in in the morning. I mean, I'm easy to please because when I remember to sit still for a moment, I always kind of realize that I'm really a silly little sentimental person. I really just like life a lot. My own life specifically, of course, I love it fiercely, but also like life in general. I'm just like very, very pleased to, you know, be alive and that there even is such a thing as morning sun in the kitchen. So after talking about this for like a full 10 minutes now, I'm kind of like realizing that my big detox is all of it kind of about clearing away as much as possible of what is like in the way of me having those like small moments more quiet, less noise this year. That's, that's kind of what I'm after. What do you say? I want to write, I want to read, I want to go on walks with David and like have dinner with friends once in a while. That's it really. The rest, I kind of want to minimize and concentrate as much as possible. 
2024 will not be the year of the Wally for me. No more endless clearing rubbish and like answering thousands of emails. I'm over it. And who knows, maybe I'll even one day make like not answering emails a charming quirk of my personality. But enough about me, what are you detoxing? If I could give any recommendation, it would be this, airplane mode. Dramatically cutting screen time. It truly, truly is a life changer, like turning off a kitchen fan. Anyway, can't wait to hear your thoughts on this. Give me a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this one and see you next week, I hope. Take care of that little brain of yours now because you only got the one. Peace, peace.